This video is well about hurricanes. So I've made content related to tropical cyclones and tropical weather, such as animations, but this time it will be a little different. Let's see how strong hurricanes really get. In this video, we'll be focusing on the Atlantic for the meantime and explain those in the other places the other time. The reason why we'll be focusing on the Atlantic is that the main scale used to measure the strength of hurricanes in this basin is the Saffir Simpson scale, which we'll be explaining in a bit. Typhoons and cyclones are basically hurricanes but in different basins, in which different scales may be used, which we'll be explaining in another video. Now hurricanes usually have two indicators of strength, wind speed and pressure. The higher the wind speed, the stronger the hurricane gets, and the reverse is true for pressure. One thing is that pressure in the meteorological sense doesn't have any major standardized scales, like uh, for tropical cyclones themselves, unlike wind speed, which is the Saffir Simpson scale. Now what is the Saffir Simpson scale? Well, it is developed in 1971 by civil engineer Herbert Saffir and meteorologist Robert Simpson. It is a 1 to 5 rating based only on a hurricane's maximum sustained wind speed. Of course, we also have tropical depressions and tropical storms for weaker tropical cyclones, but this scale does not take into account other potentially deadly hazards such as storm surge, rainfall, flooding, and tornadoes from a tropical cyclone. To start, when a tropical cyclone forms, it is usually classified as a tropical depression. It is a tropical cyclone with winds slower than 38 miles per hour or 62 kilometers per hour. Most tropical depressions are disorganized, however, but they still bring heavy rainfall, so be aware of flood-related or landslide-related hazards. From this point, a tropical depression either does one of these two, intensify to a tropical storm, or dissipate right away. A tropical storm is classified when a tropical cyclone reaches winds of 39 to 73 miles per hour or 63 to 118 kilometers per hour. It's much more organized, stronger, and are more dangerous than tropical depressions, but not strong enough to be classified as a hurricane. A famous example is Tropical Storm Allison of 2001, which only reached winds of 60 miles per hour or 95 kilometers per hour and a minimum pressure of 1000 millibars, but it managed to bring heavy rainfall to a large area in the United States, causing heavy flooding, particularly in Texas. The storm cost $9 million worth of damages, which is extremely destructive for a tropical storm, and it killed 55 people. Most tropical storms, however, do cause fewer damages than most hurricanes, but flooding is a big threat from tropical storms. When a tropical storm intensifies, it becomes a hurricane and we arrive at the core of the Saffir Simpson scale. A Category 1 hurricane is classified when a tropical cyclone reaches winds of 74 to 95 miles per hour or 119 to 153 kilometers per hour. Usual indicators that a tropical cyclone has intensified to a hurricane are a presence of an eye and a more organized structure. When a Category 1 hurricane impacts, it is expected that very dangerous winds will produce some damage, mostly roof damage and some trees, and power lines could be damaged resulting in power interruptions. A notable example is Hurricane Isaias of 2020, reaching peak winds of 85 miles per hour or 140 kilometers per hour and a minimum pressure of 987 millibars, which mainly affected the Caribbean and the US East Coast. The hurricane caused $4.73 billion worth of damages and 18 fatalities. They're certainly dangerous, but not as much as compared to the next four categories. Now we're into Category 2 Hurricane. It is classified when the tropical cyclone reaches winds of 96 to 110 miles per hour or 154 to 117 kilometers per hour. It is certainly stronger than the previous one, but not strong enough to be considered extremely intense in major. When a Category 2 Hurricane impacts, 
it is expected that extremely dangerous winds will cause extensive damage, in which several well-constructed homes could sustain roof damage, many trees could be uprooted, and a near total power loss is expected for several days or weeks. A notable example is Hurricane Sally of 2020, reaching peak winds of 105 miles per hour or 165 kilometers per hour and a minimum pressure of 965 millibars. It mainly affected the Gulf Coast and caused $7.3 billion worth of damages and 8 fatalities. Now we're next to... Now, Category 3 Major Hurricane. Yes, all hurricanes reaching this category onwards are called Major Hurricanes. As you can get, it's certainly becoming much more dangerous and could cause really catastrophic damage. But hold on, it is classified when the tropical cyclone reaches winds of 111 to 129 miles per hour or 178 to 208 kilometers per hour. When a Category 3 Major Hurricane impacts, it is expected that devastating damage will occur in which well-built homes may sustain major damage, many trees uprooted and electricity and water will be unavailable for several days or weeks. A notable example is Hurricane Irene of 2011, reaching peak winds of 120 miles per hour or 195 kilometers per hour. It also impacted the Caribbean and the US East Coast along with New England. It's certainly more destructive, causing $14.2 billion worth of damages and 58 total fatalities. And we're getting deeper. We're reaching... The Category 4 Major Hurricane, much more dangerous than the previous one. And hurricanes reaching this category can be considered really strong and intense. These hurricanes now feature a clear eye with a dangerous eye wall and a bigger size. It is classified when the tropical cyclone reaches winds of 130 to 156 miles per hour or 209 to 251 kilometers per hour. When a category 4 major hurricane impacts, catastrophic damage will occur no matter what. Most well-built homes will sustain severe damage and light homes could be destroyed. Most trees will be uprooted and power lines down in which power outages could last for several weeks to a few months. Storm surges brought by these hurricanes could be potentially more dangerous, especially in coastal areas. A notable example is Hurricane Laura of 2020, reaching peak winds of 150 miles per hour or 240 kilometers per hour and a pressure of 937 millibars as of April 2021. It impacted much of the Caribbean, but it mainly affected Louisiana, where it struck in this category, causing $19.1 billion worth of damages and 77 fatalities. And finally, the moment you've been waiting for... Now to the absolute highest category in the Saffir Simpson scale, the Category 5 Major Hurricane. The strongest hurricanes reach this category, and these hurricanes also bring the most damaging winds. Their sizes can grow really big, and their eyes clear with dangerous eye wall. It is classified when a tropical cyclone reaches winds of 157 miles per hour or 252 kilometers per hour, or more. What do I mean by more is that this is absolutely the highest category that hurricanes can reach, and they can continue intensify even further. When a Category 5 major hurricane impacts, it's obvious that catastrophic damage will occur, many homes and some buildings will be destroyed, trees and electric lines down for weeks or months, and the area will be virtually uninhabitable for the same time period. Coastal areas will suffer the most from the extreme winds and ravaging storm surge. Two notable hurricanes include Hurricane Patricia of 2015 and Hurricane Irma of 2017. While not the most destructive, Hurricane Patricia is the strongest hurricane in the Western Hemisphere, reaching winds after 215 miles per hour or 345 kilometers per hour, which is so high that, well, it actually breaks records. It also has a record-breaking pressure of 872 millibars, like it's below 900 millibars. Meanwhile, Hurricane Irma is extremely destructive, mostly impacting the Caribbean and Florida. 
and with peak winds of 180 miles per hour or 485 kilometers per hour and a pressure of 940 millibars, it impacted many areas and caused damages reaching up to $77.16 billion worth of damages and 134 fatalities, which is much higher than the previous hurricanes mentioned in this video. Yes, these are how hurricanes are classified according to their wind speed, at least in the Saffir Simpson scale. There's one question since there are many hurricanes that have much higher wind speeds. Do we need a category 6 hurricane? Well, according to Robert Simpson, one of the scale graders, nope. Since he claimed that when a hurricane got up into winds over 155 miles per hour, there's enough damage if that extreme wind sustains itself for as much as 6 seconds in a building, it's going to cause rupturing damage that are serious no matter how well it's engineered. Of course, that doesn't stop hurricane enthusiasts in the hypothetical hurricanes wiki from extending it all the way up to a hypercane where this tropical cyclone is so strong that it will start to obliterate the world in a matter of seconds. Well, obviously it's only hypothetical and realistically a hurricane like that won't happen in, at least in the Earth unless you're on some other planet. Let's say Jupiter. Ah yes, the great red spot. Although it doesn't obliterate the planet. But that's out of this world and we're gonna stick on our own anyways. Especially that hurricanes are natural disasters and they can cause death and destruction. Also, the wind is not only a determiner of hurricanes destructive potential. There is rain, there is storm surge, and other important factors too that this scale doesn't cover. As the hurricane season nears, let's familiarize ourselves with how strong hurricanes are and how can we prepare for this upcoming hurricane season. Be safe everyone and thank you for watching and please subscribe for more tropical weather.